Tesla is getting murdered. I would say murdered. It's uh, lower here today in the 150s. They announced a 10% layoff yesterday. Surprise, surprise. We've lost like three or 400,000 jobs so far in April. Uh, but no fear. The Bureau of Labor Statistics is here to uh, fudge the numbers. Anyways, Tesla down six bucks here. They announced they were laying off 10% of the workforce, but they can't buy a bid. They can't find a bid. Isn't that strange? Normally, does, doesn't the marketplace reward uh, corporations when they reduce expenses? Isn't this sort of a, a, a funny little anomaly here, Thomas? I, I think it's cute. Yeah. I do think it's a funny little anomaly. And, um, uh, you know, I mean, but but I don't, I think it's, for Tesla, it's more a sign of, um, hey, these problems are maybe a little worse than than we thought. Mm. Yeah, it's just nobody loves that EV trade. It went from the darling of 2020. Everyone wanted that solar and EV trade, that gigantic theme of the next decade or perhaps several decades and now nobody wants to touch this thing at all <clears throat> i wonder i know i'm leaning a little long here in tesla but i also have like a ratio spread down at 145 140 just in case it puked thank god if you guys were going to start nibbling in tesla one would you start nibbling and if you were how would you do it directionally i'm going to force you to well, are coming may 23rd also well that's the challenge in tesla right now is that you you, you can only nibble for a relatively short-term trade because you can't nibble into Tesla earnings. It's too risky. So, so, so that, that, that way- That leaves you in the three-day options. No, 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 what did you say earnings are? May 23rd. Yeah, well, we're April. I'm sorry, April 23rd. I guess April 23rd, I okay. I apologize. Okay, so April 23rd. Yeah, I mean, now you can do anything you want for the next couple of days, but then you pretty much have to, you know, if you're playing it directionally for the next couple of days, fine. But when you get into earnings, there is no such thing as nibbling. You got to go out to expect and move. And you know, if you want to play the upside, play the upside. I just don't. I don't love. It, it, Tesla's a very difficult stock to to get a big to get all puffy chested going into earnings. It's not getting any love. Victor's correct. No, no, no. You, I, you I understand. Lay off ten percent of the workforce. Stock usually rallies. That's your. No, point no. It, it usually rallies unless unless it usually rallies because you're cutting costs. But unless the the entire perception has changed where. They're like, okay, Man. this is this is not about just cutting costs. This is about we're doing damage control. And I think that's how the markets look at this. When you look at stocks like like Rivian, you know, went to cut costs and look where that stock's trading, right? Now. I know it's not the same thing, but sure. that stock's down to eight and a half dollars. Yep. And every other stock is basically worthless. Yep. It I think for Tesla it's more about, hey, we just, you know, we're facing the realization that maybe Tesla after ten years is coming back to Earth. Mm -hmm. mm. Is there a price that you like? In Tesla? There would have been if I didn't fall, if Elon didn't fall out of favor with me. <laughs> like if, if I really believe like that. Come on, you're that, an opportunist. You can I, I, I understand that. Even if you don't like the guy. I understand that. Opportunist, Tom. I understand that. And and for me, you know, I would bet on Elon if he could just shut up. Like I would be willing to forgive everything if he could just shut up. <laughs> like it bothers me. Like, I'm not, I don't draw the line in that many places, but there are certain things, you know, like I'll never cross the line, you know, with the masters, for example, and I'll never go back to Elon unless he just shuts up. Like, he can save himself for me. He's just got to shut up. Like, just go else? be a freaking genius, okay? I don't care what your opinions are. Who else has wronged you to the point of uh, not being redeemable? Wells Fargo, are they in that camp? Oh, God, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like like I'd sooner burn money than give it to Wells Fargo. Yeah, now, I wrote about there? I wrote about it this weekend because and I didn't want to be specific with different companies or different things, but I wrote about the concept that we we reward mediocrity in this country and we reward um, almost incompetence because if it incompetence delivers PR, it it has value to it. And it's not something that that I can support. You know, I think about it more in sports than anything else. But there are definitely levels like we reward certain levels of of gross incompetence. And just because it generates PR, we do it in politics all the time. 
with complete idiots and losers. We do it in um, we do it in sports all the time, and it, it and we do it in, with corporations, and it needs to change. Just because something generates a headline doesn't mean you know doesn't. I have to step away from that stuff. I'm going to find you a great quote. It's that's good so to know you were talking about Wells Fargo. I thought for sure you were subtweeting me in that whole article. <laughs> I was not I'm subtweeting you. Mediocrity. I was like, what, 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 what's he talking about? I was not subtweeting you. I'm going to find a quote that somebody sent me. God, I wish I had saved it. Um, um, All right. While I'm you're bummed. looking, who do, yeah. you, who do you got while you're looking? You got Kendrick Lamar, you got J. Cole, or do you got Drake? I don't know this one. This is <laughs> this is this is out of my when in doubt, realm. Take Kendrick Lamar. When in doubt, take Kendrick Lamar. Okay, I found the quote. Einstein is is reported to have said it best. The difference between genius and stupidity is that genius has its limits. <laughs> And I meant to, I, I wish I would have included that quote in my cherry bomb. But, um, you know, um, I, was, I was listening yesterday to a couple of sports guys, and they were talking about the White Sox, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the White Sox have the worst record in baseball. Chicago team, I yeah. like the White Sox. I still, they, they were playing last night. I watched them for a little bit. It was hard. They have the worst record. They have nobody, basically. Yeah. It's one of the worst teams. They, could, they, could, they couldn't beat a minor league team right now. Mm -hmm. They're hard to watch. But Jerry Reinstorf is out there talking the um, uh, the team's hard to watch. People still go to the games. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're selling milkshakes as their big draw to go to the games. Like, to me, to me, we, we cannot reward incompetence. Like, like, it's not, like, like another person was talking about, like, you take the worst umpire in baseball, Angel Hernandez, right? Mm -hmm. Or Angel, what's his name? Last name, Hernandez. Yeah, Angel Hernandez. So, mm -hmm. He called, I watched... He called a strikeout on a player last weekend that was six and a half inches outside on, on two consecutive pitches. And they're like, why don't they fire this guy? And the reason they don't fire this guy is because we're sitting here talking about it. Right, right, right. So because we're talking about it, we are essentially rewarding worse than mediocrity. We're rewarding total Bad incompetence. Behavior. Bad behavior. And it happens in politics all the time. You'll have some complete moron like Marjorie Taylor Greene or something. And, and she will dominate the headlines, you know, for just pure stupidity, but but we let it happen because it's entertainment, it's PR, and in finance I can't tolerate that. Like that's what bothers. So I don't care about Marjorie Taylor Greene or politics, or I don't care about baseball, you know, bad umpires or whatever. But in politi in in trading, I don't want to be in a situation where like I want Elon to be Elon. So if you want to know why Tesla is down so much. You want, you want Elon to be on, Elon, you mean just the, uh, the, the genius. entrepreneur? The genius. The genius, the entrepreneur, the engineer, you know, the, the visionary, because he clearly is. That's what I want. I kind of can't tell where you landed on this. So what do you think about ESG then? What do you think about the idea of investing for any other reason other than profitability? So the idea I'm of fine. A, I'm fine investing with for being environmentally conscious, socially conscious, or, you know, having I'm, I, I think level it's, of governance. I think that that's, I think that's all important. I'm fine with investing for diversity. I'm fine with investing for, for environmental, environmental consciousness. I am fine with that. I think there's some companies that can do it better. And there's some companies that should, because they're in areas where that is more applicable. But yes, I, I'm all about that. I am not somebody that is, you know, anti-diversity or anti-whatever. I mean, no, I'm all for, I'm inclusive in that sense. That doesn't mean saying that profitability. Saying anti-diversity is different than whether or not ESG creates distortion in markets. Like, like the idea of investing capital is to pursue profit. And if you're investing for any other motive, then are you creating a distortion in capitalism? Well, I don't think you are. I don't, I don't think you are. And I, I also think that, you know, I can make a very strong case that I can make a very strong case for investing in lots of different things is very healthy for most businesses. Like we've done a lot of stuff here at Tasty where people have said, this is incredibly unconventional. How about, how about giving away our products? How about a goodwill model like Tasty is? 
We're a pure goodwill model. Everybody told me that is the dumbest business decision we could ever make. Should close and the loop. Make close the loop. Leave, close the loop. Create an ecosystem. You. you know, blah blah blah. Nobody ever does. That, that makes no sense doing it that way. You know, a million reasons why. You know, even private equity firms. The reason we're not going to invest in you is because we hate the model. All this kind of stuff because it's not traditional. Just because something's not traditional doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Hmm. I, uh, I'm a bit conflicted. I, I think there are good elements of ESG, and I think there are elements of ESG that can be used for political power and political gain that don't necessarily serve the investment community um, and don't necessarily— Okay, I'm not going to argue. Make, I'm not going to argue with that. It might make people feel good, yeah. but it doesn't, it's, it doesn't actually create value in the marketplace. But let me ask you this quick question before I got it here as well. Uh, Vic Spot is o is over futures a little bit, a little bit of fear over the last two days. Sure. I don't know. I'm curious when you start to see sort of this funky VIX term structure. Does that in any way change the way you perceive markets? Is that like a buy signal for you? Is it a hey, I should be looking to get long or looking to take some upside delta risk, or is it just is it is it something you notice but in no way changes your strategy as you approach day to day active. It, it in no way changes what we do, but it's clearly um, the VIX, it is impossible for the VIX to stay inverted for too long. In, in backwardation just means that the front month volatility is higher than, than longer term volatility, which is, which only happens, you know, 10%, 12% of the time. So the answer there is that it probably is some form of a warning sign. And I do look at it as you know, I do think it is something that if you're looking for a bottom, I mean, clearly that's an interesting, you know, it's a more interesting argument when VIX is in backwardation because that means fear is elevated in the front month in a very it's dramatic elevated fashion. elevated here and now, not yeah. so much. It's, it's elevated for term, tomorrow. Which could be a month or two. Right, but it's elevated for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, elevated fear usually is, is leads to some kind of a bottoming, but it could take... A while. I mean, we had elevated fear in 2008 that that took, you know. Yeah, I think it was like 60 something days. It was in backwardation back then in 2008. No, 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 no. 2008, we were in backwardation for way longer than that. Months. Really? Months, oh, months, was, months. You, I. You might be right. I, I think that, I think that the longest time we've ever had heightened volatility to it, uh, like an, like an abnormal level, was 2008, 2009, which was almost 450 days, but. That took us all the way into 2010, I believe, and that was not backwardation the whole time. But I think the backwardation was like 100 days at least. I don't know. Um, don't I don't know if you remember, but the backwardation in 2008 was like unlike anything we've ever seen. I don't think we'll see that again. Hmm. So it's a signal, but you don't – something to keep in the back of your mind as increased fear in the marketplace and potential local lows, but, uh, but you, can't, you can't trade off of it. I, I don't I don't think it's I don't think backwardation is tradable. And if it is, you know, what it would mean if it's tradable for me, you would have to sell front month index premium. Like I wouldn't do it. I, I, I don't think it's I don't think you can uh, transpose it onto an equity. I think it would be index premium like S&Ps or spiders or something like that, you know, or any one of the indexes. I think you can do that if you want. I am going to uh, I'm going to be on a plane later this week, gentlemen, and uh, I'm fairly certain I'm going to be on a Boeing. Should I be nervous or not? You should absolutely be not not be nervous. You should absolutely <laughs> not not be nervous. You should. You I should can't not even be say it in English for you. He's so scared for you. You should be more nervous. What airline are you flying? Uh, United, I think. Yeah. Oh, then you should just. No, no, be no. Eva Air. Eva should, Air. Excuse me. Should Eva, be nervous Air. Eva Air. Yeah. I don't. I don't know them, but. You should be more nervous about the contamination and the food you're going to eat than the plane itself. Fly <laughs> you're going to drive the poor kid nuts. I, he's he's crazy that way. It would be good. I could get him thinking about the food, not about the plane. But <laughs> no, the I'm more worried about the plane. The plane is the safest. Listen, you're flying. Yeah, you by got an aisle seat, don't you? You're not by a hey, window. Hey, you're flying by yourself. You should never be nervous about plane flights by uh, yourself. You're only ever nervous about plane flights if you're with your kids or something like that. With you by yourself. Guy by yourself as a guy who makes his living managing risk measuring risk reward scenarios and teaching others how to do the same how does that guy have not a single care in the world i swear everything that comes up 
Hey, what do you think about this? Ah, it's don't don't worry about it because you can't how, sweat the how stuff. How do you, you do that? It's so easy, Victor. The whole thing, success is all about controlling the things you can control. You are not flying the plane. You didn't make the plane. You didn't buy the plane. Okay, you bought a ticket. All right. There's nothing. You have no That's control. That's you screwed up, Vic. You have no control over anything. People that worry about things that they can't control drive me crazy. Like, it's worry about the things you can control. Stop worrying about... Is that why you worry about me so much? Because you can control me? I only worry about... Is? The only things I worry about are things that I can control. I gave up worrying about things. that you, Everybody in the world would be better off if you stop worrying about things you cannot control. Hmm. I give this speech to our board all the time. My speech is really simple. Let's stop worrying about, like, let, don't even, I don't want to hear you talk about things that we can't control. Let's talk what about happens the things. Then, what happens then is you get a nation full of people who are sort of um, apathetic or nihilistic towards their situation because you're like, I can't control anything, so I'm just going to do. No, I'm, that doesn't, that's not, not what that means. I'm not telling you not to vote because, you, because your vote doesn't mean anything. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying, but don't worry. Like, you gave an example of flying. Like, no, you should not be worrying about flying. <laughs> eating. Eating the food, that's another yeah. thing. Eating the food, yeah, that's, that's that's risky. But flying, no, you're fine. What are you doing with Boeing at, one, at 168? We're long Boeing, and we're... Just we're, wearing all the dogs, huh? I'm long all the dogs. So right now, hold on one second, Boeing... It's up 46 cents. Yeah, we're long Boeing. That's okay today. Our worst position. It's okay today. It hasn't had an uptick in two weeks. It's okay today. Our worst position is Tesla today. And I did sell some calls in there today against my position, but it's not enough. What do you think? What are you doing? Are they still weak? You still playing the short side? I am still playing the short side, but I, I did sell some put spreads today against some of my long put spreads. I don't know. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Reduce some of the risk. Um, you are trading the VIX backwardation. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> but not because you said anything. But that's just the way I am. I like to do we wing them and how. Well played, Victor. Well played. All right, you ready to take a quick 90-second break? We'll let you get on a flight. Thanks for jumping in. Um, no. I, I will. Just, gentlemen, next time I come on, maybe we can talk about how to fix Social Security. I'd, like your, I'd take your opinion over Larry Fink's. I'm scared to death of Larry Fink. So next time, fix it. I don't know security. what Larry you got Fink, seven days to think about it. I don't know what Larry Fink said, but if you want me to, next time we talk, I'll give you my opinion on how to fix Social Security. Yeah. The first thing I want to know is, do you think we should be investing in other things other than you at the U.S. Treasuries? And then I'll talk about retirement age. Then we can talk about so many more things. We got to fit the next segment of Hear Me Out. We're going to fix Social Security. I know, Please. but you've been you've been you've been brainwashed. You've been brainwashed by like by who? By the, Sing by the Singaporean government. You've been brainwashed because of the way that they manage their retirement program. You've been brainwashed. I know. I've heard your no, speech. But I did, I did look up their CPF, and I did look up Australia's new reform. I'm sure you did. Why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you go look at other people's policies and see if they've had success and bring that as a template or at least as a starting baseline for discussion? We don't do that here. We assume we've got to create everything from scratch, and we're the greatest nation. Nobody else has figured out this stuff. Maybe we should look at other people's policies. It's interesting. I will give you that. I mean, papers. <laughs> you're the one on take you're, you're scrolling 15 second clips over there. I'm reading long policy papers and I'm the one who's brainwashed. Hey, I'm just trying to show Tony how to make pasta that's un uncooked. <laughs> <laughs> He's failing miserably.